Hey buddy, guess what? Today we're going to build you an awesome frog pond for you and your friends to play in. How's that sound? Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah? Okay, let's do it. So here we are in our lovely blank flat world where we are going to build our frog pond. Why frog pond? Because they're cool. They're the new favorite mob for everybody around. So first thing we're going to do is grow a mangrove tree. This is super easy to do. Put a mangrove on the ground, bone meal it, poof. We now have our mangrove tree. This one's pretty decent. I actually like this one. Um, if you end up with one that you don't like, some of them are gigantic. Some of them are, well, a little on the derpy side. Cut it down, grow another one, or modify it to fit how you want. Like this, I really don't like this, so I'm going to modify this a little bit. We're going to take some of these mangrove roots out, and we're actually going to pull them out this way a little bit further. So we've got a little bit more space. And same thing right here. We're going to cut some of these out bring them out a little bit as well and right there and let's bring this one out a little bit as well we'll come out this way down just so it has something interesting at the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to dig our area that's going to have our water. You can dig this however you want. So you got a nice area. Dig under the roots as well. I'll show you why in a minute. Dig it out whatever shape you want. I like to make mine pretty big, give the frogs lots of room. They got some of it a little extra deep. Just to make it a little more interesting. Now, we're going to replace all of that dirt with mud. The one exception, anywhere where there are roots, you want under the roots to have the rooted dirt. So I like to go in and fill all those in first. Oh, I said rooted dirt. I meant muddy roots. That's something totally different. Rooted dirt is a totally different thing. Now fill in all of the bottom here with your mud. And now that we have the bottom all filled in, all the way around the edge, all of this area right here, make it mud as well. So I like to come out two or three just depending on where it's at and then I just go all the way around and just kind of make it look like it was uh, natural. So one of the things you want to avoid is you don't want to go straight across in a long line like this and you don't want a really sharp corner. So you want to try to go two or three, two or three, and there we go. We have mud all the way around it. It's a nice rough border. This doesn't have to be perfect because we're actually going to change it up a little bit in a second. The next step that I like to do, I like to use moss instead of grass. I think it has a much greener look so I'm going to surround this whole thing with moss. Now the easy way to do this, grab one moss block and then bone meal it. And come over here, bone meal that one. See it's changing the grass. It won't change the mud, it'll only change the grass. And just continue all the way around. Keep changing 
that to moss. I like to go all the way around, give it good space. Just like that. One moss block, and I placed all of that. I promise that was the chair. I've got a squeaky office chair i got to get rid of one of these days. Next, I don't like the azalea bushes with this particular build, so I'm going to go and get rid of all of the flowering azaleas. Some of these I like, some of them I want to get rid of because there's too, too many of them. And there we go. Now, next I add in some coarse dirt where the moss and the mud meet. Do this after you do the moss. If you do the coarse dirt and then the moss, or you put stone and then the moss, the moss will change the dirt or the stone into moss as well, and then you'll have to redo it anyway. So, I like to go in, add a little bit of um, coarse dirt around the outside, just like that. Just a few spots to kind of ease the transition from the green grass straight into the mud. It just kind of breaks it up, makes it look a little bit more natural. The reason I use the coarse dirt, again, this will turn into grass and then it'll just look um, green all the way around. The coarse dirt will not turn into grass. So the next step, let's add in our water. When you add in the water, start with the bottom. Start in one corner and make sure work your way across. If you start noticing little spots that aren't filling in, should fill in like this. Sometimes it doesn't, okay? If you kind of go along one, one edge, it'll start to fill in as you go around. And there we have it, the water is all filled in. Now, let's add a little bit of the rocks around the outside just to add some interest. I like to use just the mossy cobblestone because it's, uh, it's muddy and swampy and it's supposed to look like a pond. So pond rocks usually have that moss growing on them. So I stick to just the mossy cobblestone. You can use whatever block you want. Um, it's just a personal preference. I like to grab all three variations so the regular stone and the stair and turn a stair here and there add in a couple slabs just a nice little rock you know nothing nothing too spectacular just a few here and there just something to add a little more interest see not a lot just a few around the outside you can do a couple in here if you really wanted to. I don't really like the way they look in there, so I usually just leave those for plants. Put a few of the stones around the outside. Again, this is your project. You can make it however you want. If you want to adjust it, use a bigger tree, make it bigger, make it smaller, however you want. This is just a basic idea. Have fun with it. Next, now we start to get into the really fun part. We're going to start adding in some plant life. So when I do this, I like to start with the taller stuff, so the bamboo. I have my tick speed set on zero so that way nothing will grow. Otherwise, these vines in the background here would be everywhere. They'd be all over the place. Um, you're going to have to keep up with the vines a little bit or put a piece of string under them. Something to keep them from growing. Same thing with the bamboo. The bamboo. I'm actually going to be using some bamboo and you can. it's not going to grow right now because I have the tick speed on zero. But... If you are using this in a survival world, you'll need to put a piece of string on top or something to keep it from growing. And back to planting. So the bamboo will grow on the mud and it'll grow on the coarse dirt, but it will not grow on the moss, okay? 
so you'll have to keep that in mind. Then sugarcane, of course, you know that's going to only grow next to the water. I don't use a whole lot of the sugarcane, um, especially if I'm actually in the swamp, because the sugarcane in the swamp looks very drab and just kind of sad, uh, something like that. So I just put a few of them around. Next, we're going to go into the water. We're going to throw in some seagrass. The way to get seagrass is to use some shears. And it'll give you the seagrass instead of just breaking it. So big drip leaves. Definitely add in some big drip leaves. The frogs like the big drip leaves and the small drip leaves. They just add a little variation. Like I said before, just go wild. These will even grow up here on the land. I think they grow on the moss even. Small drip leaves. These, I think the only way to get the small drip leaf is actually from the wandering trader. I might be wrong on that. So feel free to correct me uh, in the comments. Um, hey, I'm human. I make mistakes. I get things wrong sometimes too. And then I just go around and... Oh, that's a carpet. Throw a few things around that I like. Drip leaves, I think they'll pretty much grow on anything. No, they won't grow on rocks. Just thought I'd check. So you've got your drip leaves. Ah, I don't like that one because it's facing the same direction as the other one. And it's the same height. Okay. Frequently come back, look at it. I've got a lot of drip leaves over here. Let's get rid of some of these. I don't like these all over here together. And those are facing two different directions. Okay. Next, I'll add in some ferns, just to add a little bit of extra greenery around. Personally, I have lived in the swamp myself. I've lived in a swampy area. I've lived in Louisiana. I've lived in Florida. I've lived where it is swampy. I have never seen a swamp that looks so sterile as some of the current swamps that are out there now. So go wild add in some peonies add a little bit of color with these throw these around a bit take a step back look around something I really like to do in these um, mangrove swamp builds is throw in a couple of spore blossoms why well I don't like that one there let's move it over here it adds these little particles floating around we may not have gotten fireflies, RIP little fireflies, but we do have these drip leaves, so it floats these little particles around. Yeah, it kind of gives the same feeling. I, that's why I like to use these in these swamp builds. Next, we'll add in a few lily pads because the frogs really like the lily pads. Oh, there's one that's not, uh, there's a dirt that should be mud. That's better. Add in some lily pads because the frogs really like them. And after all, we're building these for the frogs. We're not done yet. There's no lighting. We need some lighting. So, I'm not using the new frog lights for one reason. They're very difficult to get. Everything that's in here is fairly easy to get not too difficult you can uh, get most of it or make most of it or grow most of it yourself um, it's pretty easily to obtain the frog lights however they're a little more difficult so if you have the frog lights and you can make the frog lights use those those would be amazing but if not not to worry I'm gonna light this up not using frog lights I'm using two different types of light blocks to light this up first we're going to throw some hidden light 
underneath the moss carpet. So if you put down a shroom light and then put down a moss carpet, you can't even see it. However, let me switch over to nighttime. You can see it's clearly putting out light. So the same thing, you can actually hide them under any solid, I mean any non-solid block. So now it's under that instead. You can also put it underneath one of the stairs if you wanted to. I like to hide it under the moss carpet just because then it's kind of easier for me to find it. I already know it's around. These are the shroom lights. You can use a torch under there. You can put any kind of light you want underneath those carpets. So this solves the lighting issue around the outside. However, we still need light in there. So how do we get some light in here? I use the glow berries. Okay, they will grow on the bottoms of the roots and if you bone meal them, a light pops up. Natural lighting. Take a step back and this area right here looks a little bit bare so we can actually grab some grass. I think grass will grow on here. Grow some grass on that. Throw some grass over here. Then take a little fly around and we'll put a little bit more grass over here because this looks like a little bit of a bare spot too. And that's about it. There is our frog pond all done and ready for the frogs. Oh wait, I didn't put the frogs in yet. Now we're ready to put some frogs in. You can just drop them right in the water. And they'll swim around. Put a couple, three or four of them in there. Now they they are free to roam around, so they will hop out. They'll jump all over the place. They can jump eight high. See there, he likes to sit on his lily pad. Look at him go. Look at him right there. Hello. Hello, Mr. Frog. Oh, my gosh. They will not stay in this pond. However... What did you do that for? However, they will swim around, they will stay close to the water, and you can breed them. There he is again. They like they like hopping onto the the drip leaves. Watch, let's see if he'll do it. Nope, he's gonna hop in the water. Up, oh, there we go. They can hop eight tall. So if I wanted to build a wall around this, I would have to build a wall up to like here. That's the only way to keep them in or keep them on a leash. And I'd rather have free range frogs. I'd rather just build this, breed some frogs, throw them in there once in a while. They love the lily pads. They love the drip leaves. They like to hop on them. So as long as you got plenty of them in here, they'll stay entertained. What are you doing running off in the dark? What are you doing? That's what I thought. If you wanted to, you could throw some fish in here. The frogs don't eat the fish. Now you've got a fish and frog pond.